Hey everyone, this is part 2 of my complete guide to making a Dragon Ball Z sprite animation on Adobe Animate. In this video, I'll show you guys the basics of actually animating, and then I'll walk through an animation of our Goku here that we imported last episode transforming into Super Saiyan Blue. If you missed that last video, I'd recommend watching it so you know how we got to this point and where we found the sprites, and then you can come back to this one and follow along. So first things first, there are two main points that I'll focus on. The first one is how frames work, and the second is easing in and out. To get started, you have to know the difference between a frame and a keyframe. So frames represent individual just points in time within the animation timeline down here. So you want to use keyframes to sort of just organize the timing and control how long each sprite lasts. So for example, if I wanted Goku here to stand still for five frames, as you can see, this is his frame, so he disappears after one. If I want him to stay for five frames, I'm going to move the playhead over here to the fifth frame. I'll right click, and I'll click insert frame right here. And then, this will make him last for five frames, and then he'll disappear after those five frames are over. Key frames, on the other hand, are a type of frame where the actual properties of the sprite, like the position or the scale or the rotation of the opacity are set or changed. So this means that when you want to move the sprite or swap it out for the next one, you need to add a new keyframe. So for example, if I want Goku to move across the screen here, instead of making frames like that, I'll have to add a keyframe whenever. So I'll do the same thing, I'll right click where I want it, and I'll click insert keyframe. And then once you have this new keyframe selected, then you're free to move the sprite. So I'll move him over a little. And you're gonna wanna just repeat this until you have him moved along. So you can use this called the onion skin, which will show you where your last frame was. So it's really good for keeping consistent movements. So I'll make a new keyframe. And then once the motion is done and I want him to stop moving, then that's when I can add a regular frame. So you can see every keyframe I made is the new movement and then a frame he stays still so there you have a little bit of an animation there um, so if this still is a little confusing don't worry because later on in the video um, we'll still walk through the process of actually animating a character in action um, before we get to that though I want to explain the concept of easing so basically easing is a gradual acceleration at the beginning and a deceleration at the end of the movement. So it creates a much more lifelike movement and makes your animation appear more natural and engaging to the viewer. So to apply this to our little Goku slide here, what we're going to want to do is just add some more keyframes in there so that instead of him being stopped and then just immediately sliding over and immediately stopping, we're going to sort of add the gradual acceleration and deceleration. So, in order to do that, if I click insert frame here, it'll make him last there longer and then we can change this to a keyframe. And that way, instead of having such a big movement, we can move him just a little so that he eases into the motion. And then in the middle, he can still be fast. And then at the end right here, instead of having him immediately stop, we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna insert frame change it to a keyframe, and then have him move just a little bit from the end section there. So you can see he's pretty close. So then when you go through this, if I turn on the onion skin for the whole thing, you can see that the movement is, it's much more gradual rather than just moving the same speed the whole time. He goes into it slow. So when you look at that, um, it's, it's a lot more fluid and it looks like way better than it did before. So now that we know how to make frames and how to ease in and out, we're gonna move into animating the actual transformation. So I'm gonna remove all these extra frames that we made up. I'm gonna have him standing still for a second before he actually transforms, just so you have some time to sort of see what's going on. And then we can actually get started. So I'm gonna to wanna to add a new frame here to make him sort of stand up and prepare to like charge his energy and transform. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe and I'm gonna remove the sprite. So then I know where it is and then I know where I can put the new sprite. So in the next spot, I'm gonna find the sprite over here from where we downloaded 
like we looked at in the last episode. Okay, it took me a little bit to find it, but I was able to find the spot I was looking for. This one right here. And then I'm gonna use the onion skin thing here to see right where his foot was. So I'm gonna put it on the back foot. This movement is way too fast and doesn't look natural at all. So what we're gonna do is, like you're saying, easing. If I use this tool right here, the transform tool. So this little white dot is basically wherever they're gonna warp from. So in this case, because we want them to stay on the ground, we're gonna put this at the very bottom. We're gonna stretch him up a little and move him over to the left because he's leaning back. And that already looks a little better, but we're gonna do some more with that. We're gonna do the same thing, but the opposite. So we're gonna put this at the bottom and then we're gonna lean him down. And it looks a little weird when you look at this, but it makes the motion much more fluid, just being able to add those frames in the middle there. You can insert the keyframe again, delete them, then add the next sprite. Just make sure his positioning is right there. And then the next sprite is just this when he's pulling down and getting ready to charge. So I don't really wanna get to this one quite yet. We're gonna make this one pause a little bit. So I'm gonna move this one over by pressing on it and then holding it and moving it over here. So now I wanna, because he's pulling his arms up, I wanna have him rebound a little bit over to the back. So if I wanna make him rebound back a little bit to sort of absorb the force of him swinging his arms up, I'm gonna make a keyframe right here. And just like we did before, I'm gonna tip him back a tiny little bit. And then we can freeze him for a second. And then on this one right here, start to bring him down. And then just like that, you have a very fluid animation of him bringing his arms up and then swinging it down. And now is the part where we're gonna make our keyframe here. And then, because he's transformed, we're gonna need to get our sprite of him in the new transformation. And in this case, I'm gonna go with Super Saiyan Blue. Gotta line up the feet. A little bit of easing right here. Tip them back. Obviously, we gotta add some extra regular frames to hold him in that position. Just like that, there's an animation of him transforming, and it looks super fluid and really good. But obviously, you're probably thinking, where is the effect behind him? That is what we're gonna be looking like I'm looking at doing in the next video of this series in part three we're gonna be talking all about effects and like Glow and like the auras and everything like that the beams so Then once you guys know how to do that then you'll be able to animate transformations and effects and have your sprites and everything and You'll be able to make some awesome sprite animations So if you're waiting for that video make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it I'm probably gonna upload it tomorrow or the day after but thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace.